Gord, I know it's early to uh, try and assess what happened over the course of this season, but uh, there must be some positives that you can take out of the turnaround. Well, a lot of a lot of positives, and uh, you know, disappointing, uh, which still resonates. Uh, disappointing finish to it uh, in Grand Rapids, but uh, previous to that, uh, just the way this group rebounded and and. Uh, Loved playing together, and I loved coaching them. Our staff loved uh, uh, working with these guys and, and seeing the development of some of these players and how far they've come from, uh, you know, going through some dire uh, times there early on and, and how they rebounded and, and found a way to, to get to the playoffs for one, but uh, to also make a lot of noise against a very good Grand Rapids team. You could surmise that uh, the team turned on a dime in December, but it was a slow progress turnaround, and uh, these guys just kept at it. Enthusiasm, one of the keys there. Yeah, enthusiasm and love of the game. Uh, you know, the guys could have been feeling sorry for themselves in, in those November days when we were struggling, and, and uh, with, uh, you could see it in them. That, you know, there was, there, like you said, it, it's not a, a quick turnaround. It, it comes in increments, and uh, our goaltending was always very solid. Our defense was good. We struggled to score goals, and, and that's something that's uh, it's a confidence thing. And I think a lot of guys just uh, over over time they they started to see that they could play in this league, and not only play in this league but excel. And, and certainly with our young guys, and so you know that was a gradual turnaround. And we started finding ways to win hockey games, and that confidence in each other grew, and the trust in each other grew, and. And that's a huge part of, uh, you know, a team, but also an organization. Progression for you too, as well, personally as a coach. Yeah, for sure. I, you know, uh, my first year as a head coach with the Marlies, I'd, I'd been head coach uh, elsewhere before, but, uh, you know, uh, I had very good mentors in, in Dallas Aikens and, and Steve Spot, and, and uh, working with Derek King over the years, and, and now Benny Simon. Uh, um, you know, I, I I was in their roles and, and uh, you empower people to do their job and, and but it's also my responsibility that to, to make sure the team moves in the right direction and um, you know you question yourselves at times but uh, you know I I felt a firm belief in the way we were doing things and, and in the end I, I felt like we did a good job here with our group. Do you think having the familiar staff around you made it a smooth transition into being a head coach here? Oh, for sure, for sure. Uh, uh, you know, Benny Simon played played for us, and uh, there's definitely definitely a familiarity there. Uh, Kinger's, uh, you know, he's a joy to come to work with every day. Uh, you know, even like I say during the tough times, he always keeps it light and uh, with the players also, and he knows when to put uh, put the hammer down too. But uh, you know, I, I think we all brought our uh, distinct personalities in it, and the guys fed off it. Gord, looking back at the season for you personally, what are some of the differences that you found transitioning from assistant coach to head coach with this team? Um, you know, obviously there's more responsibility as far as the day-to-day -day direction of the team and, and uh, how you perceive things moving forward based on where you are as a team personnel-wise. Uh, you know, certainly with, with the Leafs, uh, you know, there, there was a lot of transition this year back and forth with, with personnel. So, you know, and, and that's that's great. That's a challenge for me. And uh, it was something I really liked is, is being part of that uh, decision making process. And, and uh, so I, I think that was, a, you know, one of my challenges. Over your years here, I guess, you know, looking back on this season and maybe comparing it to past seasons, what was it about this group that maybe was, was different from past years? Obviously, you mentioned there were a lot of changes at the Leafs level, which forced some changes here. You know, what, what kind of sticks out in your mind when you compare this year to past seasons? Well, we've had young teams here in the past, but probably not uh, the overall identity of the team being as young as it was. And, and uh, you know, I, I know there was a perception of, of our team early on that we, we had a, a team that was very capable of, of going far. And, and uh, when it didn't happen right away, um, you know, I, I think the growth part of it, uh, you know, was was uh, our biggest challenge. And, and uh, to me, the biggest challenge and the most gratifying is that the guys did grow in those in those roles. And, and uh, you know, in the last three years, uh, we had real good success early on, uh, put ourselves in positions where, you know, we clinched playoff uh, positions early and, and were able to sort of go into that last quarter of the season uh, comfortably in a spot and just building towards the playoffs where this year we were in you know battle mode for the last two months to get to that point and so when we hit the 
the playoffs. Uh, we were basically already had been in the playoffs for two months. Enthusiastic about the knowledge that was gained by some of these rookies out there, through, not only uh, during the season and the run, but the playoff as well. Oh, for sure. Um, you know, these guys are going to take that experience, and and uh, I know the disappointment's heavy on them right now. Uh, you know, for the circumstance when you're up two nothing in a series, best of five series, you expect to close it out, and, and when we didn't, uh, and again, all credit to Grand Rapids and and their, uh, you know, the type of team they are, uh, we give them a lot of credit, but. Uh, you know, these guys are going to take that experience and, and grow from it. And, you know, I think each and every one of them showed leadership in their own way at, at different times over, you know, not only the playoffs, but the regular season. And, and so the, to, to bring that into next year, that's pretty exciting for the Leaf organization. Just kind of looking back at the series, was there anything about Grand Rapids that kind of caught you off surprise or by surprise? Not at all. Uh, you know, like, they didn't really change their identity from you know the first two games that uh, we had success against them, and they're an extremely hardworking team. Um, you know, they, they're five-man units. They play very well together, and and you know, as I communicated to our players, uh, we felt like uh, that was the identity of our team too, and and so, you know, I, I thought we uh, we matched up very well, and you know. Uh, there were some some things for me, namely our special teams, that were the difference in the in the series, and and uh, those are things that we can uh, improve upon moving forward. Corey, you look at the two young goaltenders that you had this year, and Antoine Bebo and Christopher Gibson. Back at the beginning of the season, I believe the expectation was for them to perform as well as they did. Can you talk about the strides that they've made this year, and and personally, you know, what you thought of their performance as a whole this year? Uh, credit to both of them. Uh, you know, like you said, maybe the expectations weren't as high as as uh, as what we saw over the season, and and uh, both of them. Uh, for one, just character-wise, they're great character people. Uh, they come to work every day, you know, to to work as hard as they can. Uh, they took Piero Greco's uh, uh, teaching and they made the most of it. Uh, they adapted to the professional game. Uh, although Christopher played last year, uh, you know, a bit with us, the two of them, you know, not only as far as just being good goaltenders they became very good goaltenders in a, in a very tough league and you know they, they put themselves in conversations as, as far as being potential NHL players. Uh, Gordon, was, was Andrew McWilliam unable to play in game five? He was uh, he was sick uh, so you know at this point yeah he, uh, he had uh, contracted a, a case of uh, Food poisoning and uh, just just was un unable and and so uh, we missed his leadership, his grit, and uh, you know just uh, he's a guy that we look to all year in, in those capacities. So he was a, it was a big hole that we missed in Game Five. Riding Gibson down the stretch there for as long as you did, what made you go to Bebo? In the end? I, I think I've said it all along. I have full confidence in both those goaltenders and, and Garrett Sparks moving forward in the future. Uh, we, the Leafs are very fortunate and they have uh, three young goaltenders that are potentially have uh, you know no ceiling on their potential. So uh, uh, when we went back with Biebs, uh, you know, I, I felt like uh, at the time, uh, Christopher had a had a tough game game four, and uh, you know it would give our players something that you know they they feel confident in front of both those goaltenders. But it, it was one of those things that uh, you know maybe give our players a different look and and uh, give Beebs a chance to to go out and take ownership, and and which he did. He played great for us, and I can't fault him on uh, on any of the goals yesterday. Mm -hmm. You've seen a lot of prospects in your time here with Toronto. This group right now, is it sort of maybe the, the, the biggest amount of quality that's here? Yeah, uh, credit to the to the management and scouting staffs is, is the depth is there now. And, and we might not have had that same amount of depth in, in the past with the uh, uh, potential NHL players. And, and uh, you know, I don't, there, there's, there might be some guys that go up there and, you know, Grab headlines right away, but the the overall depth of role players that we we have, and specifically on defense, uh, you can go down our, our list of defensemen, and that's where talk about Andrew McWilliam, uh, 
you know, I, I felt comfortable any one of our, uh, you know, eight defensemen, nine defensemen with Matt Finn didn't make the trip. But, uh, you know, we have great depth on defense and, and uh, through our forward group there, there's, there's any amount of guys that can go up and, and make their mark in the NHL. Uh, mentioning Matt Finn there, obviously he didn't have uh, the best year in terms of performance in terms of being injured. What does he have to do over the offseason to, to come back and challenge his spot? He's got to uh, have a big, big summer. He's got to work real hard as far as, uh, and, and you know what, uh, I'm not making excuses. The, the fact is he played last year right until June in the Memorial Cup and, and you know, so he, he sort of had a had a slow start on his summer program. Now he's going to have the opportunity to work real hard, come in uh, camp and impress with his uh, his conditioning scores and, and uh, work hard on, on his game over the summer. And, and he's the type of guy he'll take ownership of that. And uh, it's an exciting time for him. Speaking of summer preparation, obviously we know how most of the players will, will treat the summer. How, how does that work for you? What do you do during the summer? How do I, what do I do during the summer? Um, well, you know, in years past as the assistant, uh, you know, we've just uh, worked on worked on our depth and, and looking planning forward what our group was going to be. Uh, prospects come in after the draft. Uh, we work with the prospects and, and uh, so that's basically our role right now and, and uh, we kind of take our guidance from management and, and move forward from there.